This video is going to focus on palmar skin. The palms of your hands and the soles of your feet have a different type of skin than the rest of your body. We call it thick skin, and that's what we see on this slide and on the right-hand portion of the model. I want to draw your attention to the model for a moment, and we'll come back to the microscope slide. The model has three separate sections. On the very left, we have hairy skin that you would find on your arms and your legs. And we see those beautiful hair shafts that are emerging from the top of the epidermis. In the center of the model, we have a different type of hairy skin that you might find in your, in your axillary and groin regions. Um, and this skin contains an extra type of sweat gland called an apocrine sweat gland. And it produces a different type of sweat that's only produced um, in the groin and in the armpits. On the right hand portion of the model, you'll see thick skin, which matches the microscope slide that you can see now. All three regions of skin have three distinct layers. The top two are actually part of the skin and the bottom one is not actually considered part of the skin. So the top layer that we can see is called epidermis. And in the thick skin on the right hand side of this model, you'll see that the epidermis is much more thick than the rest of the skin. Deep to the epidermis is the dermis. The dermis is composed mostly of dense, irregular connective tissue. Deep to the dermis is the hypodermis. And the hypodermis is technically not considered part of your skin. We would say that it is subcutaneous. In all three types of skin, you're going to see accessory structures that are embedded deep within the dermis. We see hair follicles, we see muscle, namely the erector pili muscle that's attached to the hair follicle. We see lots of blood vessels, and you can see that the blood vessels do not uh, reach into the epidermis. They tuck right up underneath the epidermis in an area of the dermis called the papillary region. On the right-hand side of the, the model, you can see uh, at the very right-hand side that the papillary region is very distinct here, and we can see that those blood vessels will tuck right up underneath the epidermis to give good blood supply to those deeper layers of the epidermis. We also see a great deal of sweat glands. These sweat glands are eccrine sweat glands and they're going to make the watery sweat that our body uses to maintain homeostasis. If we look at the microscope slide, here we have thick skin and the epidermis is actually divided into two distinct colors, both on the microscope slide and on the model. On the model, you'll see a tan region that's the very outer portion of the, of the model and that tan region is a layer called the stratum corneum. And on the microscope image, it's this section right here, and it's a very hot pink tissue. Deep to that, on the microscope slide, we have this white um, translucent band that's called the stratum lucidum. And then we have a series of actively dividing um, cells that are pushing their way towards the exterior, toward the apical surface. We'll look at this under higher magnification in just a minute. You'll also see that we have what looks like um, tubes that are coming up from the deeper portions of the dermis and extend up into the epidermis. Those are the ducts of those eccrine sweat glands. We see one duct structure here. We have another duct structure right here. And actually on this right hand side, we can see the duct structure. And then we can actually see the pore if we look at the very apical surface. I'm going to move to the 10x objective to look at that in a little bit greater detail. Here we can see um, the very deep part of the duct structure and then if we look at the apical surface we have the pore in the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is dead cells that have been filled with keratin and that keratin is going to offer a, a protective properties to the skin. We focus that again, we can move deeper into 
this tissue. We can see between the stratum corneum and the rest of the cells, we see this line of transition here, and this is the stratum lucidum. The stratum lucidum only exists in thick skin. It's a layer that's not found in thin skin, in that hairy skin that we would see on the models on the left-hand side. If we look deep to the stratum lucidum, we see this granular looking layer here. That's called stratum granulosum. Those cells are filling with granules that will ultimately become keratin. The majority of the stratum, um, the majority of the, the epidermis here is the stratum spinosum. And we'll look at this under higher magnification in just a moment. We'll see at the deepest region here we have um, darker nuclei, and these are a series of um, actively dividing um, keratinocytes and, and melanocytes in the stratum basale. So let's look at this at the 40x objective. And here we can see that we are starting to develop um, uh, melanin granules. And then we have actively dividing keratinocytes down here in the stratum basale. We can see cells called melanocytes here and here that are going to be producing that melanin that accumulates to protect the keratinocytes from ultraviolet light. As these actively dividing cells in the basal layer uh, push outward, towards the apical surface, they begin to change, and we get a, la a layer of cells called the spinosum layer. And these cells are called the spinosum layer because of their spine-like appearance. As we move towards the apical surface, we can see that spine shape changes and the cells begin to fill with granules, and this is the stratum granulosum. And then we can see the stratum corneum and the, the stratum corneum, which is out here, and the stratum lucidum, which is this thin layer between the stratum corneum and stratum granulosum. You can see that the stratum corneum are cells that no longer have a nucleus. They are dead cells that have been filled with keratin to help protect those deeper structures. If we move back to the 10x objective. We can see all five layers, stratum corneum, stratum lucidum. This high, highly pigmented granular layer is stratum, stratum granulosum. Then we have stratum spinosum, and the very, very basal layer here is stratum basale. If we go back out to the 4x objective, we can see the entire thickness of the integumentary system where we have epidermis to the outside on the apical surface. We have uh, the dermis here and each of these little finger-like projections up underneath the epidermis is called the papillary layer. And then we can see uh, the duct structure for some of these sweat glands and if we move deeper we can see the gland structures themselves deep in uh, the dermis and almost down into the hypodermis. And we see pockets of, of adipose tissue and more gland structures down in the hypodermis. So these would all be glands and these are glands. And then this would be the ductwork, bringing those glandular secretions up to the surface of the skin.